Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're going to be talking about a subclass of the Paladin, straight out of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the Oath of the Watchers. This is a Paladin that really speaks to that ancient oath the Paladins usually have, which has to do with defending the world from creatures that come from other planes of existence. So, devils, celestials, fiends, fey, elementals. This is the whole point of the Oath of the Watchers. Your entire purpose is to defend the material plane. A lot of paladins have that mindset that they're supposed to defend from creatures, especially devils, but these guys take it a step further and just say, any creature that's come from another plane of existence, let's get rid of them. Let's banish them. Uh, speaking of which, uh, starting at level 3, when you choose the Oath of the Watchers, you get an expanded spell list. And this spell list is full of gangbusters. You get Moonbeam. You get Counterspell, which is awesome. You get Banishment. Be weird if you didn't. But you also get Hold Monster and Scrying. You get some cool stuff. And even you even get uh, Detect Magic. Like, there's a lot of good spells in this list. Uh, I say this is an 8 out of 10. There's one or two duds in there, but overall, very good. You also get your Channel Divinities. You get two options that you can do once per short rest, and both of them are cool. First of all, Abjure the Extra Planar. This is very similar to Turn Undead, which is a power that clerics get to turn undead, which just makes undead run from them. Abjure the Extra Planar works the same way, but it works on all the creatures that come from other planes of existences. Aberrations, Celestials, Elementals, Fey, and Fiends. So it's just a super turn that works on creatures that aren't from the material plane. That's not bad. The other thing you can do is you can do Watcher's Will. As an action, you use your channel divinity and grant your party advantage on their mental saving throws. Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. These are pretty important saving throws, and you get advantage on them for a minute, you and your party. So, that's good. These are both powerful abilities, and come up on a reasonably frequent basis. Obviously, choosing which one is better depends on your situation, but it's still a 9 out of 10. These Channel Divinities are very, very useful. Then, at level 7, you get your Aura. Paladins often get an Aura at this level, and this one's called Aura of the Sentinel. This allows you and any party members within 10 feet of you. When you roll initiative, you get to add your proficiency bonus to your initiative rolls. Everyone wishes they could do that. That's the sort of thing that, like, oh, I'm rolling initiative, I get to add my dex modifier. Do I add my proficiency? No. Well, this Paladin gets to. So that's awesome. You get to go first more often in combat, and any allies that sit close to you get the same sort of thing. So 9 out of 10. Real cool power there. Then at level 15, you get Vigilant Rebuke. This is an interesting one. Whenever a creature forces a mental saving throw, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, on you or your party, and you succeed on that saving throw, then you can use your reaction to deal force damage to the creature that forced the save. So if, you know, a mind flayer is trying to con mind control a party member and they resist, you can use your reaction to deal force damage back to that creature that tried to do it. This is pretty cool. It's not a whole lot of damage, 2d8, plus your modifier, but it's... Limitless. Technically speaking, every time your party member succeeds on a mental save, you can do this. There's no limitations, like, you know, so many times per rest. So, if you got a party that's, like, really benefiting from your paladin auras, and they're boosting their saving throws through bless spells or other buffs, you might get to use this pretty frequently. So... Yeah, reaction, you know, using your reaction to deal damage, force damage at that, 9 out of 10. Like, this is pretty good. And then finally, at level 20, Paladins get their capstone feature, which is usually some kind of super form. 
In this case, it's called Mortal Bulwark. For one minute, you activate this cre this um, this form, and uh, it takes a bonus action, and it lasts for a minute. First of all, you gain True Sight out to 120 feet, which is amazing in and of itself. You also get advantage on all attacks against all extraplanar creatures. The list I said earlier, aberrations, fiends, fey, elementals, or celestials. You just get advantage on all your attacks against them. But it gets even better. When you attack a creature with while this is active, you can choose to have them make a saving throw. If they fail it, they're banished back to their home plane automatically. So this basically turns all of your attacks into banishing smite. It doesn't affect creatures from the plane you're on. So if you're in the material plane and you're attacking humanoids or dragons or whatever, it doesn't do anything to them. But any creature that's from another plane of existence, this means all your strikes have the potential to banish. If a creature succeeds the save, they're immune to the effect for 24 hours, but the simple fact that you have advantage on your attacks against these creatures, true sight, so you can you know if these creatures are there, there's no worrying about whether they're disguised or whatever, and this extra... Th this is fantastic. This is one of the coolest capstone powers I've seen on a paladin. Advantage, banishment, true sight, holy crap. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 for the final form of the Oath of the Watchers. And the Oath of the Watchers overall gets a 9 out of 10. Their spells, their channel divinities, their aura, it, it's all good. Like, it's not the best paladin out there, but it certainly holds its own, especially once you get to the higher levels. And yeah, I'd say that the Oath of the Watchers paladin really sells what it's trying to do. Keep the invaders out, whether they're fiends or fey, elementals, whatever. If you're not from the material plane, you're not welcome. And the Oath of the Watchers knows exactly how to send those monsters back to where they came from. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. And keep your eyes peeled for more subclass reviews coming down the line soon. Have a good one, my friends.